Here, I'm going to show you how to ignore blanks in your data validation drop-down lists. So here we have some blanks, and over here we have a nice, neat list with no blanks. And I'm going to show you multiple ways to do it, including for Excel 365, and you should use just whichever one is easiest for you to remember. Now make sure to go to teachxl.com, download this file, hit the like button here on YouTube, the thumbs up and the bell icon and whatever other icons you have to hit <laughs> to make sure that you get all of my new videos. Now let me clear this guy out and let's begin. Okay, here we go with just a list of raw data and our blanks. So let me show you some nice neat ways to take out all of these blanks. And the easiest one and maybe one of my favorite is to grab this right click and go to sort. It is now just off the screen, but if I go sort A to Z, it's gonna ask if I wanna sort just what I selected or anything else next to it. Continue with current selection, sort, and there we go. A nice neat list that we can then select for our data validation. And if I hit control Z, just select the data, go to a data, and you have all of your sort options right here as well. Now the next one is actually my favorite way to do this. So we're going to create our list. And let's go ahead and put another list over here. Select all of the data, and you could have thousands of rows. That wouldn't be very good for a data validation list, but you could have a lot of data. And then select it, go to the Home tab, then go to Find and Select, go to Special, and click Blanks. Hit OK, and it will select all of the empty cells in your list. Then right-click and go to Delete, and choose Shift Cells Up. If you do entire row, it's going to delete the entire row, which, as you see here, would delete other data that we do care about. So shift cells up, OK. And now we have a nice neat list with no blanks. Now the next two ways I'm going to show you how to do this require formulas. So before we get to formulas, I'm going to show you how to make the list for these guys just in case you are not certain. So select a cell and go to data and then data validation or the keyboard shortcut Alt D L then settings allow list and for source select your list hit OK and you now have a drop-down menu with no blanks but you may be saying now hey I didn't see these other lists when you showed me the intro for the video what did you do okay well that's very simple select the columns right click hide and now we have let's mark this cell actually so it's easy to see and now we have no visible data over there, just our original list and the drop-down menu. No blanks. And what you could do now is to protect the worksheet and then unprotect this cell, and that would make it so that the user would not ever really know what's in between columns A and D. And you can put these columns at the end of the spreadsheet as well, so it doesn't interfere with anything. So there are many ways that you can make this work really nicely with your spreadsheet, especially once I show you how to use the formulas and the Excel 365 formulas, because what I've showed you here is not going to update if we add new data to this guy, but with the formulas or the Excel 365 one, it most certainly will. Let's delete this and go with some great formulas. In 365, we have so many amazing things. Let's go first with a sort. We have the sort function, select the data, hit enter, and there you go. But notice that we now have a zero and a zero. That's not exactly what we want. So what can we do about that? Well, let's first use the filter function. So equals filter. This is such a great function. Select the data, comma, and now we're going to make some criteria for it. What do we want to filter? Well. We want to go by these guys right here, and then anything that does not equal, so less than, greater than sign, nothing. Close it up, enter, there we go, a list with no zeros. And if we want to sort this list, just go ahead and pop the sort on, 
right outside of filter. But what if we have a duplicate and we don't want any duplicates? So green, green, green. Well, then we can use the amazing unique function. So let's go unique, put it inside sort, put around filter, enter, and there we go. This is just great. So we have sort, unique, filter, and then some criteria. And I have another tutorial that shows you how to use the filter function because there's so many great things that we can do with it. I'm not going to get into that here, but this is a great function for Excel 365 to remove all of your blanks and then if you want to sort them. And you could, of course, make it go very far down the column. And we still only get four results, but now when we input a new one, let's say yellow, we get yellow. And look at this sneaky little guy that's here because I didn't completely remove all of the formulas before I did this tutorial. So this is a vestige of the last formula I'm going to show you for older versions of Excel. And in the downloadable file, that's going to appear in column D. So that's why that's there. But now we have one more thing to do for the Excel 365. So we have this great function, and notice that it spills down here. So how do we do that for the data validation? If we go over here and go Alt-DL, allow list for source, just click the cell, the first cell, and then add the pound sign after it. That's going to make it so it will include everything in this list. Otherwise, it's only going to include the initial option. Once again, that's just for Excel 365 and spill functions. So equals C2, pound sign, OK. And there we go. Now let's remove the yellow and make sure we don't have a blank at the end of the list. And perfect. But now it's time for me to show you the way that I would say never ever ever do it unless you have to do it like this and I don't think you will ever have to do it like this this is the older version of Excel formula so let's delete these guys and I'm not even going to actually let's remove a duplicate as well I'm not even going to type it out I'm going to copy and paste it right there uh, that's the formula and even if you remember this formula, does it really matter? Because it's going to take you longer to input this than it will to sort the data to remove the duplicates or to remove the blanks or just to select them and delete the blanks. Because what you have to do is hit enter and then copy it down. And then when you go to make your data validation menu, you still only select the visible cells. So list, source, these four right here. If you select below it, it's going to have a blank cell in your data validation list. So in some situations where you want the user to be able to see this list right here, this can be really helpful. But for data validation dropdowns to remove blanks, it seems like kind of a waste of time to me. Because what you have to do here is, it's not that difficult to do, but it's kind of annoying. The range right here, A2 to A7, that is going to be where your actual list is located. And you have two places for that, right here in the index and right here in the is text. And you're going to want to make sure you have dollar signs around all of the range references here, except for the last one. And then you have one more right here, row A1 to A6. This is going to be easy to forget if you don't understand what's going on. A1 to A6, what does that line up with? It includes the header even. All we're doing here is trying to get the number of cells that is contained in our list. So we have six values here, and we need this to output six. And then row A1, that needs to have no dollar signs on it. And if we now go down here, you're going to see that A1 has become A2, and A3, and so on. And if I go any further, I'm going to get into a much longer discussion of exactly how all of these things interact, and it's really just not worth it in this case. You shouldn't honestly spend that much time learning how to use this guy if the result is just to get another column without any blanks in it when you can just as easily go to the data tab and sort 
and also you have remove duplicates right here. And you can do all of that faster than typing this in or remembering how it works or learning how it works. So it's there if you need it. And you now have four different ways to remove the blanks for your data validation lists. And the downloadable file has all of these methods listed out with three different drop down menus. So all of the references are there in a single file. So it makes it easier to compare the different methods and see which one's going to work best for your situation. And that's it for this tutorial. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the little bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials. And leave a comment if you have anything you want to say.